Well, great to be with you today. We're going to continue just another session on this beautiful message of grace manifesto. There is a manifesto, a declaration for you. And, and if you would take it to heart, uh, just absorb that and, and, and let it really sink in. It is the path to freedom, to fulfillment, to everything that God has for you. So we're going to do another little uh, installment of some nuggets that will bless you. I also uh, uh, remind you of the entire teaching that is available, 12 lessons in all. These programs don't even make up one lesson. They're just nuggets from a lesson, but you can receive that. Let's look at the full screen. They can see there all the things, the 12 teachings on MP3 or on CD, either which way. And also you see the phone numbers that's on the screen. You can text me and you can call the Brace Grace Prayer Center. There's a prayer minister standing by. But right now it's time for a straight talk. Well, thank you so much to everybody who's sending in your question. If you have a question, make sure to email all that information at the bottom of the screen. But today, uh, getting to our first question, here we go from Louise. On yesterday's program, you talked about pornography and that addictions are not broken through workshops or prayer. Can you please explain more? Well, in case people missed yesterday's program, I don't think you did, Megan. You know I wasn't <laughs> spending the whole program talking about pornography. I was talking That's about true. Christ. Mm -hmm. I use as an example a situation where people were so shocked that Christian men who were attending a conference where they were uh, dealing with the issue of pornography, they had workshops about freedom from pornography, they were praying against pornography, uh, that actually the hotel owners reported that uh, they had never seen so many pornographic movies downloaded to the hotel rooms. And I said, you shouldn't be surprised at that. You see, the more you talk about sin, people think if you, if you just talk about it, you just got to be, just lay it out there, just talk about it. You got to expose it. You know, you can expose sin, you can talk about sin, and you can dissect it, and you can have a five-step plan to freedom and a seven-step plan to freedom. The, the, the gospel is that the more you do that, the more sin will get a hold of you. And that's why I wasn't surprised. At the, if you're attending day after day meetings where you're told, oh, men have such problem with pornography, and here we're going to tell you how to break free from that, even the men who didn't have a problem, they'll be tempted. And, and what I was saying is not that prayer doesn't work. I said to pray against the sin doesn't work. But prayer that focuses your attention on Jesus Christ and lifts him up, he is the focal point. And so I was saying to be free from addictions, and that is an evil addiction. Pornography is an evil addiction. Our focus and our freedom is in Jesus Christ. And so go back and listen to the program and all the programs we're doing on these kind of topics. Always a good time with Question and Answer with Peter Youngren. Here is our next question. Mm. I have been following all the guidelines to socially distance. I haven't seen people or, or my grandkids for two years. I'm ready to give up. Please give me your advice. I almost want to ask you, Megan, have you been following all the guidelines? Pro uh, probably not. <laughs> not all of them. They to... constantly change. I can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> you are, well, with kids and everything, is there rules for the school? and? Oh, there's so many different rules and they change and, and everything. You're dizzy. You're dizzy. Do you want to answer this question or should I answer, Beth? I'm ready to give up too, <laughs> Beth. Okay. I'm with you. <laughs> okay, Beth. Okay, I'm, I'm speaking to you and Megan and to everybody else, I'm saying if, and I think Beth says she's been isolated. Mm -hmm. She's kind of, I would say, Beth, it's time to get out. Look around. Uh, I, I mean, uh, we, 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 for, for months now, uh, south of the border here, people are packing stadiums around the world in Europe. I, I think we Canadians need to realize that there's a virus here. It's dangerous, but really, uh, you know, get out. Go shopping. Go and buy yourself something to eat. Buy yourself something to wear. Come to church. So, so my, we cannot keep violating this principle of the blessing of coming together, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Megan, I tell you, I have fallen in love with the local church more during this, uh, these lockdowns because, frankly, at least our church, when you come here, it's such a lift. It's such a stark difference. You know, when your husband, Nathan, 
because you, know, you know I'm talking about him, but just saying for the audience's sake, or I'm preaching or he's preaching, it's such a stark difference from that kind of fearful intimidation in society. So, so get out and, and above all, get to church. That's my answer. How about that? That's a good one. Very good. <laughs> and of course, you have been coming to church. Yes, right? yes, yeah. absolutely. With the kids. With the kids. You, you should maybe tell them that early in the, this lockdown, we were bringing the, your kids were up here just, just for a demonstration. It's okay. <laughs> As a point of encouragement. It's okay. We never told anybody that, no, but it was, it was a little, yeah. well, okay, enough of that. But thank you very much, Megan. Thank you. All right, let's get to the teaching here. Here it is, part one. Chuck Swindoll, he said like this, if you preach grace as it really is, you will produce controversy and misunderstanding. Well, I sure don't want to create any misunderstanding. I think I'm pretty clear, as the Apostle Paul was. I, I may, it, it, it's all Jesus Christ. It's not our good intentions that will bring a change, but the love of God will, will transform you. You say, well, why, why do you say that grace insults people? Because it's a, there's a resistance. It's like, well, if it's, if it's 100% Jesus Christ, if he is everything, what about me? I, I have been working so hard, and I've been trying, and I have been resisting. And, and, you know, I hope you did all those good things, not in order for God to bless you, but because God has already blessed you in Christ Jesus. See, there's a big difference. That's a big, we don't do things in order for God to be favorable towards us. We do things, good things, prayer, fasting, studying, evangelizing, because God has already been good to us. So we're living in, in that dimension of God's grace. Paul says here, I quote again from the scripture I read a few minutes ago. He said, I'm a bond servant of Jesus Christ. That means I have willingly and lovingly identified myself with this new life in Jesus. I'm identified with God. There's a power principle here. Yield to Jesus Christ. I call it Y2J. Yield to Jesus Christ. That, that's a power principle. I've learned that if I yield to him, good things happen. Good morals. Oh, good morals are important. You, you see, good morals come by yielding to Jesus Christ. Your, your willpower is insufficient. You say, well, I, I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to try harder. And, and you may be a very strong-willed person. Some people are weak-willed. You may be naturally, maybe it runs in your family, you're naturally strong-willed. So you, when you say, well, I, I'm just going to push through, and you will succeed sometimes. But sometimes you will collapse. I can't do it. But there's one key to victory, and that is yield to Jesus. Only Jesus saves. You see, so it's impossible to overemphasize God's grace because Jesus Christ is the source of God's grace. We can't overemphasize Jesus Christ. Okay, I better keep reading some more. Uh, verse 11, I would have you know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel which was preached to me is not of human invention. For I neither received it from man nor was I taught it, but I received it through revelation of Jesus Christ. Here he's stressing again. He says, I didn't get this just by some study, by going to school, it was a revelation. I keep saying, I hope as you hear me teach this, you're not going to say, oh, Peter Youngren says, or in that church they say, you're going to say, I got a revelation of Jesus Christ. The Lord showed to me. The Lord, because the Holy Spirit is at work showing things to you. See, we're not teaching a tradition. We're talking about a revelation, an insight. Some might even go as far as call it an epiphany, a, a, an encounter. We, we're not talking about a religious scaffolding. We're talking about new life. We're not just talking about history that, you know, this happened 2,000 years ago and 2,000 years ago. And we're talking about Jesus now. Why do you think the Apostle Paul got to write half the New Testament? <laughs> it was because he had a revelation. He wrote 13. 
14 of the books of the New Testament. And he talks about God's love, the width and the height and the length and the depth. And he talks about the inheritance you have in Jesus Christ. You have an inheritance. Think about that word inheritance. You know, why do you get an inheritance? Because you worked hard? No, it's, it's strictly in your identity because you were included in a last will and testament. That's why you get it. You could be the worst person in this country. And if you're included in, in a last will and testament of someone who is wealthy and has much to give and you're receiving a vast inheritance, you, it doesn't matter if you're the worst person or the best person in this country, you get it on the basis of your inclusion. And you are included in God's love. And so when the Apostle Paul is teaching this, he said, well, what about, you know, I need this and I need that. Well, I tell you, the, the Apostle Paul was not depriving the church of truth. You know, many things that people talk so much about, talk about revival and, and, and inner healing through rehearsing the past and all that. You know, maybe it helps somebody, but the Apostle Paul doesn't talk about that. And I don't think he's depriving people. Uh, Paul here, who wrote half the New Testament, he doesn't teach that good morals and, and holy living, uh, that they are prerequisites for God to bless you. He's constantly teaching you receive the blessing of God freely. And then once you receive it, it produces good in you. And then he, then he gives here in Galatians, he, he gives his own life as a testimony. And he's trying to say, look at me. I'm not a people pleaser. I'm not a religionist. He says, you have heard of my former way of life in Judaism, how I used to persecute the church of God beyond measure. I tried to destroy the church. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my countrymen being more extremely zealous for my ancestral tradition. So he's saying, you know, I, I'm, I'm a young man. I was advancing in my religion. People liked me. They promoted me. They were applauding me. I was doing well in keeping the Judaism ancestral traditions. But then he says... So, so, so don't think that I don't know what this religious game is about. Don't think that I'm trying to condone sin. He says, D don't think that. But he says, I was delivered from that. And now he says, I've discovered that God's got good news is neither Jew nor Gentile, you know, Greek or Roman or barbarian. He gives all kinds of options. But what matters is the new life in Christ. And so Paul gives his credentials here because some people might accuse him and say, oh, Paul, you're just going soft on sin. And, you know. see, see, what matters is the new life in Christ. We see this again and again. It's not whether you did that or whether you had this performance. It is the new life in Christ. We are offering people new life. Jesus said, you must be born again. He's talking about a spiritual life. It was referred to as the life from above, not for some far off place out in the universe, but above signified that which is from God, where God is the source. And, and that's what's going to give you the power. And, and so you see all the information, the phone numbers that call me, uh, call the Grace Prayer Center. There are people there to pray with you, to believe God with you. And uh, I think they will help you a lot. Get the whole teaching. Let's put it on the screen there. So you see the MP3 version. You have the CDs. 12 lessons, 12 teachings, and uh, every one of them power packed. And uh, I think you will, you, you will just say that changed my life because a lot of people who have heard this teaching have actually said that. So make sure you get that. Right now we have a little bit more for you, a little time for more. So lots happening yet. Let's go to it. You know, you kind of teaching this message of grace right now. No, no, he says, I, he says that which I thought, that which I thought was on the plus side. I thought all my effort were on the plus side. Uh, that they were on the credit side. But he said, I've discovered that that's the minus side. When I discover what's really on the plus in my account is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You know, I can even relate to myself in that. As a, I remember as a teenage evangelist, I was starting out and serving Jesus. Before that, I was just a you know, good young 
church. Remember, I'd received Christ in my early teens, and, and I wanted to do good. I wanted to kind of earn God's favor. And, and you know, God didn't turn his back on me. I was doing everything I knew to do. But then I, too, discovered Christ's righteousness. That is not my effort, is him working in me. Let's read here a little bit, see if we can get a few more verses in. Verse 15. But when he who had set me apart, even from my mother's womb, and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me, so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. He says, I received a call. I, I was set apart by the grace of God. It wasn't by my own effort. And then he says, and this is the why I have this behind me here. It, Paul says, God revealed his son in me. He said, here I was walking around in my religion, doing my religious ceremonies, and then something happened. I saw something. I believe you're going to see that today. I pray you're going to see that. He said, I saw that God had put his son in me. He was in there. He was, I didn't see it. My eyes were dark, and I didn't see that God's son was in me. Could it be? Well, we know it is that God's image is in every person. God put eternity in every heart. Could it be since Christ upholds all things, all things are made by Christ, including you, that Christ is there with you, but you don't see it? Paul was like that. He was all hooked up in his religion. Saul of Tarsus doing his religious stuff. But then he said, something happened. I saw the light. God gave me a powerful discovery. His son is in me. Ooh, you stay with me in this teaching. We're going to discover his son in you. And he says, then I got to read this here now. He says, when I got this, I didn't immediately consult with flesh and blood. I didn't go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went away to Arabia and returned once more to Damascus. Arabia, woo. Did you see he mentioned Arabia? Some people say, oh, can anything good come in Arabia? Actually, you know, some of the powerful, most powerful insights of the gospel came from God to Paul in Arabia. That's why I believe Arabia shall experience, uh, well, that's one of the reasons I believe Arabia, Saudi Arabia, and we've been reaching out to the Middle Eastern countries, shall experience the power of the gospel. And then he says, and I kind of read very quickly here. Then three years later, I went to Jerusalem and became acquainted with Cephas, which is Simon Peter, and stayed with him for 15 days. But I didn't see any, any other of the apostles except for James, the Lord's brother. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. I was still unknown by the sight of the churches of Judea, which are in Christ. But they only kept hearing, the man who was once persecutor is now preaching the faith, which he once tried to destroy. There's so much to unpack here. Paul is saying, you know, after I received this revelation, he's trying to emphasize that Jesus gave this to me. That's what I want you to know. Paul is really making a big deal here about, I didn't get this by just attending church. I didn't get this just by, you know, attending a course. He said, and, and courses are important. Listening to me teach, listening to the teaching we are offering during these weeks, a powerful, life-changing teaching about the Grace Manifesto. But, but ultimately, that teaching is only to serve the purpose that the Holy Spirit will reveal this to you. So he says here, it was only till three years later then I went to Jerusalem, and I only spent 15 days with, with Peter. Well, what's the big deal with mentioning these specifics? He's saying, well, you know that it takes more than 15 days to receive this revelation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's why I'm saying it takes more than one television program. It takes more than one teaching session. That's why we want you to get that whole album. Get the whole album, all the 12 lessons. Get, get it all, uh, because it takes more than just having heard it once. It's got it's to hit your spirit. It's got to get right inside of you. And, and Paul is making that very strong. And he says, you know, he, he, he says, uh, I, I was very devout in my religion. And, and, but he says, now I'm an example of this message that Jesus can reveal himself to people. I was so devout in my religion. I was a murderer. I was a persecutor. But he says, I'm now a testimony to the fact 
that, that had been changed. And then he says, you know, when he was traveling around first, people hadn't seen him. So they didn't know what Paul looked like. They just heard this guy who used to persecute the church, who was full of murder. He now is preaching the same message he tried to destroy. And he says, and this is the end, I think, of chapter 1. And they glorified God in me. What a powerful statement. He says they weren't skeptical. They weren't negative. They weren't saying, we don't want to listen to that guy because, you know, you know all the evil he's done. But they said God is great in him. Start seeing Jesus in people. <laughs> Start seeing Jesus in others. Start glorifying. Look at how God is at work in you. And if God can be at work in you doing good things, then God is at work in other people. Uh, you know, Paul here in this teaching, he's so pumped up. He's, he's so concerned. And the issue at hand is that the truth of the gospel will continue. I put it on the screen. The issue at hand then and now in our country is that the truth of the gospel might continue. We have so much nice churches, so much nice music. We have, we have everything. We got everything. We, we have such a marketing. We have such a social life. We have so much that we offer the community. But our concern is, because the only thing that will give us the lasting power is the gospel, that the gospel might continue. Oh, I hope that you will get a hold of all of this teaching as I'm offering it. But right now, I want to give you an invitation. The Apostle Paul himself, he, he is an example of, of the beauty of the gospel. He says, look at me. I was so hooked on my religion. I was so hooked on being zealous. He said, I was so zealous. I was willing to have people murdered if they didn't agree with me. I mean, he was a terrorist. But he said, God revealed his son in me. I saw that I was created by Christ and that Christ upheld me, but I didn't know him. And my eyes were opened and I discovered Christ. Could that be happening to you? It would be good to pray a little bit right now and just thank God. This could be the very beginning of a, of a journey of evermore discovering Christ, God's son in you. Shall we pray right now? Father, I thank you for your love. You say the same prayer at home. Say, Father, I thank you for your love for me. And I'm beginning to see this insight about Christ, that Christ took my sins. Christ died and was buried for me. And Christ rose again. And you say, Jesus, live in me. Thank you that my sins are forgiven. I receive it now. Amen. Well, if you pray that, you can see some information on the screen that will help you to move forward, traveling on this new journey of this new life. So just avail yourself of that. I mean, this is a discovery. Christ in me. Not, not, not just Christ near me or Christ somewhere out there, but, but this, is, this is Christ in me. This is a discovery that changes everything everything. You see, to most people, God is remote. He, he's there, but, but, but not here. He, 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 he exists. I believe in God. Oh, every religious person would say that, but, but, but not, not here. When I discover this, that this life is in me and it's in you, it changed everything. I, I hope you'll get this whole teaching because uh, you just let your mind and your heart open up to it and receive it, and it will make such a powerful impact. You can get on MP3 or on the album there with 12 lessons. So we really do it thoroughly. And, uh, and let me say the gospel. The gospel is for the world, but it's also for Christians who, who come out, pushed it aside, forgot what it was all about. And, and so we are all about gospel advancement. Thank you for being a partner in that. Please watch. The VIP family is about believers making their life count for Christ. The VIP family is a partnership with the Lord Jesus Christ and with one another. We believe in the cause of Jesus Christ, and together with Him, we are an unbeatable team. VIP stands for very important person and for visionaries in partnership. 
billions of precious people don't see what Jesus Christ has done for them. Our mission is clear, to open their eyes to see the light of Christ's gospel. Millions receive hope and healing as the gospel touches their hearts. Jesus saves. Yes, Lord. Jesus is Lord. Yes, Son of God. Hundreds of thousands of pastors are trained. True apostles and true prophets reveal Jesus Christ. Seven Bible school campuses equip students across Africa and Asia. Millions receive follow-up for new believers. Millions more are reached by television and social media campaigns. Persecuted Christians receive help and much, much more. The VIP family is about compassion for others and then about taking a step of faith. If we have a heart for God and the lost, this is the ministry to uh, support because they reach so many millions of people. Make your life count. Participate in daily gospel advancement. Participate in prayer and in convenient and constant giving. Many give monthly by automatic deduction from a bank account or credit card. Whatever your gift, you will participate in making history among those who have never heard the gospel. Call now, 416-745-1820 or give online, give.peteryoungren.org. I say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, uh, when, when the first missionaries, which were Paul and Barnabas, were sent out, it wasn't their private uh, missions agenda or that Paul and Barnabas privately felt we, we kind of want to do this. We feel this is what God is saying. No, it's just the whole group of believers that were there in the city of Antioch, which was a great city at that time, uh, that, that they all said, this is our responsibility. And they, they all felt that God spoke to them. In fact, the Bible doesn't even mention that the Lord might have spoken to Paul and Barnabas. It says he spoke to all the believers. So I, I want to say thank you for joining the VIP family. This is not some private uh, missions, evangelism enterprise. This is the cause of Christ for every believer. Would you go to, your, to, the, to the, uh, the online site, to our website, and you can just sign up right there. Or you can call the number on the screen. The information is there. How you can become a partner in the VIP family every month and then do something special this month. Uh, we need your help. We thank you. You are loved. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A2W1, or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.